So you can see his glowing face. So today we'll, we would like to know the secret of this balanced life and how to get blessings with this balanced life. Can you all hear me okay? Okay, so welcome to our session. And a big thanks to our sisters for the warm introduction. And I, I take it you all, you're all familiar a little bit with these subjects and the Brahma Kumari's teachings, meditation, Raja Yoga. Is anybody hearing these things for the first time? Anyone here who's never heard these things before? No? Okay, so I think you all know the answers already. So I will simply be repeating to you what you already know today. And uh, I came into this study of meditation and self-awareness self uh, when I was a child, I was about eight or nine years old. And so since then, the study and practice has been part of a daily life experience. And uh, one of the things I was always interested in is why people behave the way that they behave. For example, why do people become angry? Why do people become angry? Um, it doesn't seem to make sense why people get angry. And when a person becomes angry, it doesn't look very intelligent. It doesn't look smart. And in fact, it has been said that anger is a temporary form of insanity. When a person is angry, they are technically mad at that time. Um, certainly, we don't enjoy the experience of someone being angry towards us. It also means that when we are angry towards another person, that also is not so pleasant. And so a question would arise in my mind, if receiving anger and being angry at somebody else is not pleasant, why don't we simply drop anger? Why don't we let go of anger? And although on paper it seems like a good idea, but people are unable to control their emotions. And so it means that there is something missing in the equation of life. Although we pay a lot of attention to the outside world, to our health, family, study and career, but relatively little attention to the inside world, to our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings and so on. And so what we'll be exploring today is how can we discover our best self inside? How can we bring out our personal excellence? Now, who here owns a smartphone? Who has a smartphone? Should be everyone. <laughs> These days, even young children have smartphones. And we know that every few months or every few weeks, a smarter version comes out. So, if phones can get smarter, if technology can become smarter, then uh, what about people? Can we also have smart humans as we have smartphones? Think about this then. What would you be like version 2.0? If you were to upgrade yourself, how would you behave? How would you be? You may say, well, maybe I would have more tolerance, I'd have more patience, perhaps I'd have more courage, more control over my emotions, etc. And so I believe that within every person, 
there is a better version. And in fact, in this study and this practice of meditation, we start with this premise. That is that our real human nature is very divine, very pure, very beautiful. Now it's time to make that return journey to bring that nature out once again. Can I ask how many people here already do some kind of meditation? Raise your hands. Only six people. For the rest of you, you don't do any meditation at all. No. All right. Would you like to do meditation? <laughs> all right. So there's two things here. One is that there are people who meditate, and then there are meditators. And people who meditate, they do something to deal with the stress of life, to handle difficulties, to deal with daily problems. But to be a meditator is something different. To be a meditator means it's a lifestyle. That means as you go through day-to-day -day life, one part of you is naturally checking what kind of thoughts am I having today? So to be a meditator means you are naturally checking what kind of thoughts you are having through the day. Because meditators understand the most important energy that we have. If you think too much, you are throwing away your mental energy. And what happens to a person who thinks too much? Sorry, sir. Yeah. yeah. Energy is lost, yes. As a result, the mind becomes very tired. When the mind is tired, the patient's level goes down. Tolerance level goes down. And then our relationships become very difficult. In fact, the most important thing in human life is to learn how to look after your mind properly. It is said that mother and chief even the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, he said, if you, he said the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your mind. But what is quite shocking today is how little attention we pay to the mind in daily life. That's it, for example. Whenever you buy a new machine, whether it's a phone, whether it's a car, it's a fridge, along with that machine, what do you also receive? If you buy a new phone, you open the box.
kind of thoughts should come later? How should you wake up in the morning? How should you put the money to sleep at night? How much thinking is enough about a situation? How should you receive criticism? How should you deal with that? Or if you fail at something, how much should you regret that? What about feeling guilty or feeling ashamed? So all of these things we have to learn how to deal with, how to use the mind. But what happens is we go through life without understanding the mechanism of the mind. Therefore, we create a lot of tension for ourselves, a lot of stress. And the result then is life seems to be difficult. Simply because we have not paid attention to how to take care of the mind. Now, of course, in the world today, you know, as life has become faster and faster, and everybody has their gadgets. We have become so lost in taking care of the things outside of us. But we also know, although we have great technology today, healthcare, communication, great machinery, but also the stress levels are very high. Divorce rates are very high. Uh, people needing all kinds of psychological care and support is also a big industry. And lots of people, you know, when they suffer from uh, mental fatigues or stress, because their body experiences illness too. And then they find we can't sleep or we can't be happy. And so people take a pill to go to sleep, a pill to feel happy, a pill to calm down and be relaxed. And this is no way to live. Okay, yeah. All right, so let's try again. So what are the things that you need in order to discover your excellence is, uh, is something called intelligence. So the question arises, are you intelligent? You have to raise your hand if you're intelligent. You're kind of not sure what you're looking at other people. What about the gents? No, no intelligent gents here in this society. Okay, one other way. Well, let's look at what intelligence means. It's one of those words which has taken on new definitions. So I'm going to use the board to help me to share some ideas. So the one that we're all used to hearing about is of course this one. Listen to your own inner wisdom. 
Every person, every soul has inner wisdom. And that wisdom is trying to guide us in our daily decision making. But for most people, we don't listen to it. The reason is because the mind is too noisy. The mind is chattering all the time. So it's like trying to listen to a voice in the storm. And if we want to access our inner wisdom, we have to learn to make the mind quiet. And one of the ways that we can do this is through practice of meditation, creative visualization, techniques which enable you to relax the body and to relax the mind. So before going further, Let's do a simple exercise in learning to relax body and also to relax the mind. Okay, this is for the creative visualization. So I ask you to look at it straight, your feet flat on the floor. Please do make sure your phones are silent if you have them. If you're holding something, just put it down just to be free. It's important to be relaxed but also to be alert. So, for this particular exercise, if you like, you can just close your eyes and I will guide you in this simple visualization. So this just takes about three or four minutes. So we sit for a few moments. Just to relax the body and to relax the mind. When we do visualization we use the power of images. Because the mind thinks in the pictures. So first, just draw your attention in towards yourself. to visualize this very pleasant quiet view of peace in the center of the world. This is your private and personal space.
Just be with this feeling of peace in your life for all the days. Noise of nervousness, noise of desires, 
the noise of what you want. <coughs> so external noise and internal noise as it allows to access the noise. Therefore, it's so important to build into your daily life moments of silence. When you break the habit of the mind, the speedy nature of the mind. And if this is new for you, I would suggest try to this every day for one week. At least two times a day, if not three times. And just see how differently you feel when you've done that. At the end of the week, you probably feel, I have a lot more energy. I feel my emotions are all under my control. And as some of you know, as some of you know, we call this as traffic control for the mind. I noticed that the Buddha has been driving around all day. There are so many speed breakers. <laughs> so there are so many very good secrets. Libraries, libraries, big jump. So many speed breakers. So we should also have speed breakers in the mind. It's a drug mm -hmm. control. It's maybe trying to stop for three minutes, four minutes, two or three times in the day. It's like you are going from the doing realm, the doing mode, to the being mode. But just stepping back from what you're doing and come back to the quiet room, come back to your place. <coughs> As a result of that, then you come back into action, your meeting, your work, with a clear mind, with focus, and with greater understanding, clarity. I believe that's what makes you more productive also at work. Plus, when you speak something, you are able to choose the words accurately that you wish to speak. If the mind is stable, if the mind is clear, I will say what I will need to say. If the mind is anxious, tense, there isn't clarity. You want to say one thing and something else comes out. Then you say, sorry, I didn't mean to say that, or you have to explain that clarify. So much energy is wasted by doing that. So build it into your life and see the difference. I also add here that uh, the difference between two words, efficient and effective. What is the difference between the efficient and the Only six need to be done today. 
The other two can't wait till next week. And the other two are actually unnecessary and a waste of time. So efficient is that you're running around getting everything done is not perfect. But you may also be exhausted. Effective is your mind is stable. Internet is clear. You can see the big picture. You can see the future. You realize oh, it's only six things are actually necessary. Two things can wait. These other two things are just repetition, not necessary. So when the mind is stable, the intellect is clear. Even in our daily decision making, in our conversations, in our relationships, you can know how to deal with people. For example, you may say a good thing to a person. But if you say the good thing at the wrong time, it can have zero effect or it can backfire. If you're emotional, let's say for example, someone has made some mistake. And you know very clearly that he or she made a mistake. And you tell that person, but it may be the wrong time. He or she is not ready to listen. So you go and tell that person, look, you should have done this, you should have done that. But if his or her meaning is not right, he will reject what you say. You will argue back with you. And he will tell you ten things that you have done wrong. Then there must be an argument. So if your mind is stable, you will know if I have to say this thing to this person, but now it is not the right time. I have to wait a few hours and we wait till tomorrow. So when the mind is stable, your intellect can judge what to say, when to say, how much to say. This is all part of the art of harmonious relationships. If you have a good relationship with your own mind, you can manage relationships with other people. If you and your mind are not friends, then it's not possible to have good, healthy friendships with other people as so silence moments in your life, building meditation into your life, helps to emerge this thing called you know, this intuitive capacity. Is this making sense of your Is this useful for you? Yes. Alright, there's two more intelligences here, so let's just finish this before we go further. So next one up, as we kind of be discussing, so of course this one. As you know, this is your emotional intelligence. So that's to do with your ability to understand and manage your own emotions and also to pick up how other people around you feel. If you can do the first, then you can do the second. You can manage your own emotions and you can understand how other people are feeling. This is a very necessary skill, especially if you're working with other people or if you're handling your family, other personalities. So the question arises how well can you handle your own emotions? Let's say, for example, that uh, you are in a bad mood. Does it happen sometimes? Yes. In a bad mood. So the question is, how long do you stay in a bad mood? How long does your bad mood last? A few minutes. A few minutes? That's not that's good, that's good. <laughs> I don't know. For another reason. So for some people, it may be a few hours, it may be a day or two, some people a couple of weeks, maybe a few months. <laughs> That's too long. When a person is in a bad mood, 
It's like there is a sign here saying, don't talk with me. <laughs> don't make any jokes because I am not going to laugh. And of course, uh, when you are in a bad mood, then you are useless to yourself and you are useless to other people also. Especially if you are working with others, people have to wait until you recover before you can be productive, useful, have a conversation, share ideas. So of course for all of us, sometimes we get a little bit irritated, a little bit annoyed. What's important is how quickly I can lift myself out of that. Now, we all make mistakes, don't we? Is there anyone who has never made a mistake? Never made a mistake, probably never learned anything also. Can you remember the first thing that you failed at? What was your first failure in life? Sorry, Exactly, exactly. Yeah. How old were you? How old were you? 22. Your first failure was at the age of 22. I have no problems. <laughs> That's pretty good. And anything else? I think, I think you, you had another failure. Um, almost 22 years before that. That was walking. When you first try to walk as a baby, you must have fallen down five times, fifty times, maybe hundred times. You fell down. But what did your parents do? When you fell down, what did they do? Yes, you have to get up, try again, try again. Practice, practice, practice until you learn to balance to be able to use the next problem. So they encourage you. That encouragement is necessary to overcome the failure. <coughs> and imagine if parents said something opposite <coughs> the first time they were falls down. It's a baby tries to walk first time, falls down, the parents say, uh, this walking is not for you. <laughs> this walking business is waste of time for you. Always go. But if the parents said that, even today we would all be crawling around the floor. But in the same way, your mind is like your baby. Your mind is a child. What's very important is to have a positive self-talk to your mind. Check the quality of your self-talk. Especially when you think of something. And you have to do this quickly so you don't default to negative self talk. So, three things, three simple things. One is ask myself, okay, what can I learn from this? I accept, I fail, I accept, I make a mistake. What can I learn in which I will do differently next time? Quickly get busy with identifying the learning potential. And even write it down with the goals. Once you've done that, number two is forget the situation. Do not keep thinking again and again over the way. Do not keep reviewing that scene in your mind again and again. Carry the learning with you. Forget the situation. Third thing is move on. Move on to the next thing. Get busy with the next thing you need to do. One of the mistakes that people often make is they keep dwelling upon their failures and mistakes. The result of that is your spirit becomes cold. You feel disheartened. 
that even though you have lots of potential ability and talent, it doesn't come out. Because a person then suffers from lack of self-confidence, lack of self-esteem. And then it's just, it's just a shame, that's all. Somebody who like that really open their wings, done so much, being so useful, due to the belief that I can't do it, not fully enough, the potential is never realized. Looking a moment at the impact of our beliefs. So check yourself, quality of the self talk and continue to make it positive and purposeful. Let me have one more, which is sometimes described as the highest of the intelligences. If you think that's here. Yeah, I know you know the answers already. <laughs> That's fine. It's spiritual to make this one. What does that really mean? There's two things here. One is your sense of identity. Second is your purpose in why you are doing whatever you are doing. This is so, so, so important. So it raises two questions. The question of identity is, who am I? How do I define myself? How do I see myself? And that's the basis of how you are dealing with life. The question of identity. Second thing, purpose. Whatever I am doing, why am I doing whatever I am doing? You go to work, why are you doing that? You stay at home, why are you doing it? How clear are you about why you are doing what you are doing? These two questions they take you to the very heart of your soul. It's like saying that you understand the DNA of your soul when you explore these two questions. Who am I? Why am I doing what I am? People who do this, people who have a high SQ, I've noticed two signs. One is such a person will own their motivation. Their motivation belongs to them. There's two kinds of motivation. What is called as emotional motivation. Emotional motivation is like if somebody says to you, if you do this, I will give you more money, I will give you a company car, I will give you an office, I will give you this, that. Emotional motivation makes the person excited very quickly. It's very fast acting, but it does not last very long. The other kind of motivation which we are interested in is inner motivation or spiritual motivation. That's based upon doing this inner work to understand who we are lying, why are we doing what we are That kind of motivation is not just for your job, it's for your own life. To say it's like a red thread which runs through your life. You know who you are, you know what you're doing. And even if you fail at something, you don't lose your motivation. In fact, your motivation is what increases. And what I find today is lots of people they lose their motivation very easily. They get very excited about doing something, they have a wonderful idea, jumping up and down, and then you see them after one week, and you say, well, how is it going? So, oh, I, I lost my motivation, I gave up, I got bored. Then you see them a few days later, and have got huge motivations about doing something else. 
few days later at the end of our multimedia business. So it's like a person who starts something and doesn't finish it. It starts something else, doesn't finish that, it starts something else. It's like drawing these half circles and not completing it. So why do we run out of motivation? It's because that motivation is coming from the wrong place. It is simply emotional motivation. Inner motivation makes you very focused. And success respects focus more than it respects intelligence, which means rational intelligence. There are lots of people in the world who have a high IQ, but they're not successful because their mind is not focused. They don't know what they really want. There are other people who may have a less IQ, but because the mind is focused, they're able to reach their goals. It's like this then. Let's say one day I am walking along the street and I'm just kind of my hands in my pockets and I'm looking at the shops around and I don't know, just moving around slowly. And you may see me in the street. You may stop me and say, Oh, I know a good person who did this looking out of the door. How are you? 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 I'm walking along the same street and I have a very different walk. No, it's like it's like that kind of business walk I always see going somewhere. And you may see me, but you won't stop me. Because you will think he's going somewhere, he's busy. So they may just say, oh that's just you. I know you're busy. It's like this with life. If my mind is not focused, I don't really know what I want. Any obstacles will come in front of me, stop me, and block me, and take up my time. But if I know what I want, I'm focused, life gets out of the way. Because you are giving the message to life. I'm busy, I have somewhere to go. Life says, okay, please go, please pass. So the thing is to shift from the thinking when circumstances change, when situations are better, then I will live the life I want. Then I will be happy. Then I will deserve it. If you think like this, you will be waiting for the whole life. Circumstances are there, but do not put circumstances here. Do not put them on in the sacred space inside you. First is you, then is circumstances. Know what you want and want what you know. Do that inner work. Then just see how the power of your vibrations is able to change your circumstances. And for that, whatever problem we have in life, whether it's a person, a situation, finances, health, they say to be acknowledged, we accept that there is something to deal with. But do not put it in the sacred space inside you. Always live in this awareness that I am a powerful soul. I am a peaceful soul. I am a joyful soul. My peace, my happiness is my personal property. Live with this awareness, you empower your awareness, the vibrations of your awareness will change your circumstances. This is the power of our own thoughts. How are we doing? Is this all clear to you? Alright, let's do one or two little exercises and little games. And to help us understand how we have more to unlearn than we have to learn. We have to unlearn what we have misled so we can relearn what we should have learned. 
So you're looking for a bit of interaction. Okay, so we start with this. Is this for the floor again? There is one simple exercise we use sort of about in training. Let me sort of you know run across this already. Has anyone seen that before? No, anyone? Okay, we can come to a view, so if I just ask you to be quiet, probably. <laughs> So here's a big challenge for the rest of you. Can you draw four straight lines to touch all of the nine dots? If only four straight lines to touch all the nine dots, but you cannot take the pin off the board. And you cannot go over the same line twice like this. Yes. Have you done it before? Do you know the answer from the book? No? Right. <coughs> okay, we'll have to miss the pin. We'll call you to miss the pin. Yes, okay. Thank you. 
they placed a glass barrier down one end of the fish tank. And they began to draw fish food down here. So the fish will swim towards the river and it will fly through the barrier. It could not get through the barrier. After a while, it understood, I cannot get through this. So it will swim to the barrier and then it's turned around like this. Meantime, Scientists continue to draw more fish food beyond here. And the fish continue to move in this fashion. But sometime later, what the scientists did is they removed the barrier. So now we have fish food over here, one hungry fish here, and no barrier. So what did the fish do if the barrier was removed? Yes, yeah, it continues, it continues in the same direction. And eventually the fish died. But what killed the fish? The fish died of the fish died of experience. So the experience of that past failure to reach the food. So although there was no longer the physical barrier, somehow it still existed in the mind of the fish. And what are we talking about fish? What human fish do is what they do. We have a difficult experience, we fail at something, we have a painful experience. The situation has gone into the past. But the way that we keep thinking about it, we keep thinking about it, we keep thinking about it, and we create a value of ourselves, a mental value. Eventually, that barrier becomes a belief. The belief I cannot do such and such. The belief I am no good at so and so. The belief I am unable to X, Y, Z. And when you have these beliefs, it is influencing how your thought energy is moving, how your creativity is moving. If you want to open up your mind, look inside, you find a number of these self-imposed beliefs which are limiting your ability to be the best that you can be. This is called the quiet conditioning. It is under laboratory conditions. But the same thing happens to us in every day of life. Things we see, things we hear, comments we obey, education, media, upbringing, all of those things are conditioning our minds and create and generate certain beliefs. The good news is you can dissolve all of those barriers. And that's what meditation and self awareness is about. Hence, meditation is the rediscovery of my truth. Meditation, the return journey to be my authentic self once again. But we ask you, the things that you have learned in your life so far, how have you learned them? Things you have learned in your life. How have you done it? By practicing. Experience. 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 Let's do a little exercise in learning styles. Uh, this is 
require you to stand up for the story. Of the Self-awareness 
meditation, creative visualization, to take care of the mind. For all of us, what do we want in our lives? Everybody wants to be so right. We want happiness in our hearts. We want the exchange of love and respect in our relationships. And we should have that. That is our life. It's our real nature as we have souls. But we have to claim that right. The thing we are battling against is our own past habits. And if we do nothing, the habits will continue with our life. If we begin to make a change, starting with tomorrow morning, start the day in some silence and meditation, notice how things begin to shift in your life. Okay, we have maybe just a few minutes. Um, one or two things more to share with you. First, let me ask. Do you want to say something or add something or you want to ask a question? Certainly, when you start practicing meditation, it's then that you realize how restless the mind actually is. If your mind is restless all the time, you don't realize it. When you sit down and try to focus, you notice how much it is running. But that's normal at this day, especially. It's good to know that, okay, I have some work to do. But then the question is, what is the process of concentration? How to develop better concentration? Let's look at this for a moment. Um, think back to when you were at school. Which subjects was it easy to concentrate on? Which subjects did you find the time passed by very quickly? Mathematics. Because you know, your mind is in some of that. Somebody else? Biology. Because you like biology. Language. In other words, when there is interest, when there is enjoyment, time passes by so quickly. But when you are not enjoying, and you look at the watch, look out the window, you think, how long before the lesson finishes? <laughs> So interest and enjoyment are a great natural concentration. Let's take an example. Let's say I ask you to sit in a chair and to watch your favorite movie for two and a half hours. I say, sit in this chair, watch this film, don't move around much, try to be still. Could you do it? Your favorite movie. Not so difficult. It's your favorite movie. Let's take the second scenario. I say sit in the same chair, look at the same screen, two and a half hours, don't move around much. This time the television is off. And you do it this time. More difficult this time. What's the difference between the first scenario and the second scenario? Okay, so the first scenario, you might be drawing the film. Second scenario, there was no film. But let's look at the first scenario. You are enjoying the movie you want 
that was sold to end the movie. The question is, where was the movie actually happening? Your mind. Because the screen is not a living thing. It is throwing some images at you and throwing some sounds at you. Those images and sounds are stimulating thoughts and emotions in your mind. The movie is happening in your mind. And you enjoy experiencing those emotions and those ideas. And it can take you on a roller coaster of emotions. There is happiness, there is sadness, there is excitement, there is fear, there is terror. All these up and up and up. Having been on that roller coaster of emotions, you say, Oh, that was a great one. <laughs> Why? Because it took you on a journey, an emotional journey, and a journey of ideas. Second scenario, it was very stimulus. So you got bored. But meditation is like this thing. As you learn to focus with certain selected thoughts based upon spiritual knowledge, you learn to create an experience. You learn to go on that journey using spiritual knowledge. Now, what are the steps involved in doing that? Here is a model which works for me in terms of how to create a good stage of concentration. So before meditation comes concentration. But before concentration there is something else. Contemplation. Contemplation means you take a certain thought or an idea and you contemplate it over. So, for example, in that meditation here, we use the meditation commentary. I am weight, I am peace, I am energy, I am the soul. It is necessary to give the mind this work to do, this contemplative work. It is part of concentration. Second thing that is also needed helps the development of concentration. So you create a visual image, and as some of you know, we visualize the self as the star of light. Some people concentrate more on contemplative thinking, other people are more visual people. Here, we use both. We say create a visual image, and also think these thoughts at the same time. These two things together, they create this condition which is known as concentration. So essentially concentration is when your mind and your intellect, they both come together. The mind represents what you feel like doing. Your intellect represents what you should be doing. When there is a mismatch between the two, concentration is poor. Like, for example, a student who has an exam tomorrow. She or he is trying to study at night, trying to revise, prepare. So I can't do it. The intellect is saying, study, study. Focus, concentrate. The mind is saying, boring, boring, boring. I don't know what to do it. That's what the ocean says. Concentrate. And we can see these two voices inside. So when these two match, what I should do and what I feel like doing, and they come together, that is concentration. The result of concentration is absorption. It 
closing, close focus. And when you go through that stage of concentration, they have a resolve. The result of that is what is known as meditation. Meditation is not thinking. Meditation is not not thinking. Meditation is the experience of selected thoughts based upon the spiritual knowledge. So this stage here, you start with thinking. Spiritual knowledge is the raw material that we use. But as you pass through the concentration stage, thinking will change into an experience. You change into a feeling. That's where we want to get to. We want to experience peace. Not just talk about it. We want to experience silence, power, not just to talk about it. So, what is needed here is practice. The thing we suggest is making clarity in practice. Is anything you want to do well, the language, drive a car, play the musical instrument, be regular, systematic practice. <laughs> Same with meditation. And therefore, we say, as an experiment, if this is good for you, Try every day, start every morning, have some meditation every evening, regularity, and see how the concentration develops. Then, how do you know when you are feeling relaxed? Well, it will be your feeling. And you notice in your day to day life, the feelings are different. Where you used to get really nervous in a certain situation, and you feel a lot more. Opposed. Where you used to get upset because of something, now your peace is not disturbed. But where you used to get angry when a certain person spoke to a certain age, now you just feel more cool. It's you naturally notice in your interactions, your daily relationships, fear, anger, sadness, tension. It has been replaced by peace and composure. Plus, other people begin to comment. They say, hey, it's not, what's wrong with you? How come you don't get angry anymore? What are you eating? What are you drinking? Then we stop shouting. So, comments will begin to come from others as well. And you realize this is, this is what I want, this is what I need. I want to keep this peace and this happiness with me. I want to live with this. Then it becomes your lifestyle. So we thought to end off with another little meditation to experience this thing we call as soul consciousness. Is that okay with you? Yes. yes. All right, so once again, we have your friend. Straight on your feet, but on the floor. So, let me know if you have your eyes closed. If you close your eyes, then you can need to pay attention to the road, drift off to sleep. When you have your eyes open, Eyes are open, then you need a point to focus on and to look at something. So I think you can choose any, anything to look at, or if you wish, you can look at the, uh, the forehead, my forehead. This is my average media, the baby media. The center of the forehead is known as the seat of the soul. Are you trying to go to sleep? Okay. So you can look at. Um, yeah, I'll do it. So you can look at the, um, the, 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 the
central in this project. Just like uh, follow the other thing. Um, that's a good reminder. Please do check your phones. So they are This beautiful star of this energy. The center of the world. And the star.
Thank you. 